All right, so in talking about logarithms, one of the things we will want to do with them is graph those suckers. All right, now uh, you might be looking at this picture and going, oh, that's pretty interesting, but what the heck is it? What that is, is the first known seismograph. What a seismograph is, is something that measures the intensity of an earthquake. And earthquakes these days are measured on a logarithmic scale. The Richter scale that you hear about earthquakes, it's a logarithmic scale. So basically you're talking about exponents, powers of 10. And uh, this was the first known seismograph, and it was Chinese, and it's very, very old. So that's why that picture's there. It's a pretty cool looking picture. Okay, so here are the parent functions for the logarithms. Let's look over here on the left hand side. So I have on the left hand side f of x is equal to the log base b of x. And look at what the graph looks like. It is just the reflection across the line y equals x for the exponential function. Right? On the exponential function we have the point 0, 1. It's the y-intercept. When I switch those, it becomes 1, 0, and that is an x-intercept. For the exponential function, I had a horizontal asymptote at the x-axis. When I flip that across the line y equals x, the logarithm is going to have a vertical asymptote at the y-axis. Here's the reason why your domain for logarithms are everything that's bigger than 0. Right? Because that's what the range was for an exponential, is everything that's greater than zero. And the domain, or the, the range for the exponential becomes the domain of the logarithm because they're inverses of each other. So on the left hand side, this is a growth being reflected across. And over here on the right hand side, it's a decay being reflected across. All right? So let's just take a look at that on Sketchpad and just move stuff around just a little bit see how cool it is. Alright, what we have graphed here is in purple the dashed line is the exponential function and the red one is well it's inverse which is the logarithmic function. Now right now the base is at 2 so this equation the purple one is 2 to the x and the red one is the log base 2 of x. So let's just watch it as uh, the base b changes. So if I make this thing anywhere greater than 1, the original function, the exponential, was a growth function. And the reflection for the logarithm, what it looks like. Now as I get closer and closer to 1, now I'm, I'm kind of crossing that line y equals x there. And then whenever it starts being below 0, or below 1, between 1 and 0, now you have the exponential decay, and then it's inverse. And then if it's a negative number, nothing happens, because that doesn't make any sense. Okay, so now let's look at it with, uh, like, the SRT transformations thrown in there. So, on this next page, here still my B value is 2, and I just have the parent function. The parent function is in red, so that's that will stay the log base B of X. Whatever the B is, and right now it's 2. And then the purple one is the one that I'm translating, H in K. Alright, so notice that whenever I move the H, that what it does is it's changing where the vertical asymptote would be. See, my graphs have it, like Sketchpad's having a, a bit of trouble rendering that thing around that asymptote. And the Y-intercept would change, or the X-intercept would change. Alright, let's move that over here. And now let's move the K. Now the K is just moving the graph up and down, and when you do, the X-axis hits different parts of the of the graph and so it also affects where the x-intercept is going to be. And then of course I can put it all in there with the b-value and move it around stuff and whatnot. All right. All right. So to be honest with you, I wouldn't graph a logarithm directly. It's a little confusing for your brain to try to think about the exponents. What's a little easier is to think about an exponential. So, if you could graph the inverse, which is an exponential, as step number one, whoops, step number one is plot the inverse. So look over there at the flipping math logo. That would be the dark purple graph. And then, step number two, just switch your points, your x and y points, flip them. 
and that's the uh, dotted one that's over there on the Flippy Math logo, right? So here it is on the little picture here on this little graph. First step is to plot the inverse, which is exponential, and then flip it over the line y equals x, which is just switching your x and your y coordinates. And there we have our inverse. Right. So uh, you want to give that a try? I think you do. So let's look at this one graphing example. I'm going to graph log base one-third of x, and I'm going to find out what the domain and the range are. So uh, I don't want to graph this. I want to graph the inverse. So switch the x and the y. So x is equal to the log one-third, base one-third of y, and now write that in exponential form. So exponential form, it's y is equal to one-third to the x power. So I'm taking powers of one-thirds. The first power I'm going to take a one-third is going to be the negative two power. The negative flips it over, so it becomes three, and then three squared is nine. So, whoops, there it is. Okay, so it looks like they're all there at once. Okay, the next one is the negative one power. Negative one's going to flip that fraction upside down, and then three to the first power is the three that's right there. Okay, to the zero power, of course, it's just one, and then to the first power, it's a third. So here is the inverse function, really, that's the exponential. Now I'm just going to take each of those points, and I'm just going to flip the x and the y coordinate. So look at the first one over here on the left. It is negative two, nine. So I'm going to flip it, and it's going to become nine, negative two, right there. Okay. The next point is negative one, three. So this is going to become three, negative one, right there. One, our zero, one becomes one, zero. X, a y-intercept becomes an x-intercept. And then finally, I've got one, comma, a third becomes a third, comma, one. And draw in your graph. And my sketching little program has a little bit of trouble at this vertical asymptote. And we know that there should be a vertical asymptote right here at the y-axis. So let's now write our domain and our range. So the domain here is, I have an asymptote at the y-axis, so that starts at zero and then goes to infinity. The range, well, that's gonna, I'm going to have all the y values up top and on the bottom, so my range is all real numbers. And that'll just about do it. Okay, so here are some key things about logarithmic equations are the graphs of them. So on this one, this one is just uh, the inverse essentially of a, a growth function. The one for the inverse of the decay function is going to be pretty similar to this. All right, so the domain is supposed to be all uh, x values greater than zero, and the range is, in, is all real numbers. You'll have a vertical asymptote at x equals zero, which is the y-axis. You have an x-intercept at one, for the exponential, you remember you had a y-intercept at 1, and those things just get flipped. This is an increasing function, so in other words, going from left to right, it's always getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It is continuous, so you don't have to raise your pencil off the paper whenever you graph the thing, and it's a one-to-one -one function. Every input has one output, and every output has one input. It passes the vertical line test and the horizontal line test.